All right, so in that last one, we left it off where we just ran our Django project. Perfect, that's what we wanna see. We wanna actually run our Django project to make sure that most of the things are working correctly. Um, I'll do this on time to time when I create a brand new project, but once you get comfortable, you will skip this part to just make sure that it's running and might jump right into all other things that you might wanna do. Um, so, and that's okay too, but for the most part, I wanna make sure that my virtual environment's working and I have my Django project working okay. Uh, but something we did notice when we left it off last time is we it said you have unapplied migrations. Now, mag migrations is a new thing as of Django 1.7, as in built into Django. So if you came with Django before, you would know of something called South. That is no longer necessary. We now use it built right into Django. That's the biggest change that I know of that's happened in the last few years is actually adding in these migrations to the database so it gets very it kind of gets very technical but essentially what it means is when we want to change how we store data migrations make it super easy for us which is awesome and you'll see why later once we actually get into that um, but for now what i want to do is do our first actual migrate so our first migration so to do that it already gives us the command a lot of times the errors will show you what you need to do or it'll give you some sort of like error or prompt you with a message just like this um, to say, hey, you are missing something, something you haven't done. Django is actually very good about that. Python in general is very good about that um, as far as showing you what the error is. So hopefully we'll experience enough errors in this project that you can actually improve your own skills because of those errors that come up and we'll show you ways on how you can kind of get around them. All right, so let's actually run this command. So I could type it out or copy this either way and I'll just do python manage.py and hit migrate. I hit enter and it does all of this stuff. So let's actually talk about what's going on here. So it's synchronizing unmigrated apps. So apps, we'll talk about apps very shortly, but um, it's making sure those apps are synchronized to the database and it's applying any migrations that's happened before. So these are other kinds of apps that it's also synchronizing to the database. And then it's synchronizing apps without migrations, meaning apps that have not yet been created and migrated into the database. So created into the database. All of this stuff has everything to do with the database. So now it's gonna go through each app itself and putting things into the database for us. And the database is where we're gonna store all the data. Think of it as like an Excel spreadsheet file where you actually put certain things in there. That's kind of how databases work. That's actually kind of how Excel works. So now that we have these databases or the database set up, let's actually take a look at the database itself. So if we open up our finder window or we're basically opening up the folder in desktop for this project, which we called Try Django 1.8, which is in the virtual environment Try Django 1.8 folder. And then it's inside of source SRC. And we have this new file db.sqlite3. That file was created when we ran this first migration. It's created every time. So if for some reason there's something wrong with your database, you can rename this file or delete it and run migration again and it will absolutely create it again. So let's do a few things here to see what I mean by that. If I did python manage.py and hit migrate, I hit enter. Now things are a lot different, right? So it's doing the same three main oper operations, but um, it's not showing all the same data, right? And that's because there's no migrations to apply, where up here it says running migrations and it actually applied several of these migrations. So if we change the name of this file or if we deleted it, let's say I did DB2, um, that's actually gonna change everything, all the settings, and if I run migration again, it does everything all over again. And now it has a new database file in here uh, for us, which is cool. So that actually does all sorts of things for us. And that's more or less going from a clean state for our database. So it removes anything that's on there. Well, by deleting it naturally would remove anything in the database. Uh, and then we can run it again. This is something that you could get in the habit of, especially when you are learning, right? When you're learning and your database is getting jumbled, you have a bunch of stuff in it that you don't want anymore. Just delete the file and run the migration again. Uh, because how all that stuff is stored and how we see it, those are things that we'll get into. But those things won't really change. Your database is really just literally about the data, 
right? It's uh, it's really, that's all it is. But how that data interacts with a user or you or the rest of your code, that's completely up to a different sector of coding in general. The database and the code can be absolutely separate. And in this case, they are. If you notice, it says .sqlite3 or SQL or SQLite3. And that's SQLite3, it's a type of database. Um, and it's not Python, so it doesn't say .py, right? So it's not, it's completely different. So anyways, that's a little bit about databases. And something you also note is we haven't created like an admin user for this database. So admin user would allow us to administer the database and also the Django admin in a different way. That's something we'll actually discuss in the next video. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.